So, morning everyone. Uh, my name's Amanda Shaker and I'm going to be talking today about um, adapting to online teaching at short notice, basically. So, um, I'll, I probably haven't met a lot of people here, so I'll just um, introduce myself uh, quickly to start with. So, my name's Amanda Shaker and I am an early career teaching focused um, academic at La Trobe University in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I'm a statistics lecturer and I teach students from both statistics backgrounds and non-statistics backgrounds. Um, and I live in Melbourne in Australia. So that's a little bit about me. Um, so just um, a little bit of background about um, this talk and, and what it's about. So until March, of this year, the entirety of my teaching was face-to-face -face and or blended. I'd never taught a fully online subject before. Um, I think probably a lot of people in the UK call a subject a module. I call it, I call it a subject, but same thing. Um, since March 2020, I've been teaching fully online. So um, our, our um, teaching year starts in March. So we had one or two weeks of face-to-face -face teaching. And then, um, and ever since then, it's been fully online, at least where I am um, in, in my area at La Trobe. So um, as you can imagine, that's been a, quite a quick and unexpected change. Um, so I'm gonna be talking today from the, not from the perspective of somebody who is an expert in online teaching, but from the perspective of somebody who has needed to adapt within a short time frame. So I'll talk, I'll talk first of all about Kahoot, classroom polling with Kahoot. I'll give a little bit of background about classroom polling and about Kahoot, and then I'll talk about my experiences with it in general, but then I'll talk about how I've adapted to using that online. And then um, just briefly at the end, I'll talk about just a few other reflections in general about online teaching. Um, since March of this year. So um, we're probably all fairly familiar with what classroom polling is, so this background will be very short, but a brief definition of it, it classroom polling allows instructors to quickly ask a question and instantly receive responses from students during class. So um, there's obvious benefits to doing this in class. Um, some of the positive at least the positive research based outcomes, increased engagement and interaction, um, lectures less passive and less impersonal, um, improved understanding and learning even of complex material. Another one, students are more likely to ask and answer questions, which is always great. And students not alone in their confusion or misunderstanding, in improved student performance, increased attendance, and um, increased identification of student misconceptions. So there's a lot of good reasons to do it. Um, now the particular classroom polling platform we'll talk about today is Kahoot, although um, there's lots of different platforms. So, um, you know, it, it, different people have different preferences. So there's Poll Everywhere, Slido, Clickers, Zoom polling, Mentimeter, Socrative, and, and others. Um, and with a group this large, there's probably, probably um, all of these have been used by somebody here. So, um, so I guess a lot of what I say today about Kahoot would apply to these as well. Um, I don't really have any experience with any of them except for Zoom polling and Kahoot. Um, so that's a bit of a background on classroom polling. So Kahoot in particular, it's a game-based learning platform um, and it's used in schools a lot and also other educational institutions. Um, it was launched in August of 2013 in Norway and it's learning games or cahoots. Um, they're mostly multiple choice quizzes. Um, there's other types of, of um, games as well, but predominantly it's multiple choice quizzes and um, students can play on whatever device they like. Or most of the time they'll be using their phone, but you can play from a computer or any other device as well. 
So a couple of um, um, quotes in the literature about Kahoot. Um, Kahoot enriched the quality of student learning in the classroom with the highest influence reported on classroom dynamics, engagement, motivation, and improved learning experience. It fosters a sense of community. Kahoot's, Kahoot is a fun and effective platform for formative feedback. Um, so these are some really nice things and I've certainly experienced a lot of those things in um, when I have used Kahoot in my teaching as well. So these, in, in my own teaching, um, these are, are some of the themes of what students have um, talked about when they've given feedback about using Kahoot in the classroom. Words like fun and engagement, enjoyment, um, worthwhile, friendships, interesting. There's a lot of, a lot of positive themes coming from the students. Um, obviously, the bigger the cohort, the less uniform that positive feedback is, there's always going to be a, a, a bigger range of opinions the larger the group is. But I would say predominantly um, students have been really positive about using this. Um, so an example of what it actually looks like. Um, this is, I guess, the results of this particular question. Um, is no surprise that not all students have statistics as their favourite subjects, particularly when they're from um, non-statistics backgrounds. But this is one way Kahoot can be used just to get a bit of an idea of student perceptions. Um, another way it can be used, so often I'll just use it for five minutes at the end of a lecture. Um, uh, when I have perhaps a smaller cohort, um, I sometimes will have a running leaderboard throughout the semester because every Kahoot you'll get, uh, the students will get a certain amount of points and um, those points can build up throughout the semester. So um, I wouldn't do that with every group, but perhaps for a smaller cohort who was keen to do that, uh, have a running, a running leaderboard. Um, so you get that sense of friendly competition. I've even had students playing from home or from work. They get their classmates to send them the pin number and they'll join in from, they can't even see the question or the answers. All they can see on their phone is the colours but they'll join in just because they, it's, it's fun and they want to get the points. And I'm completely fine with that because it means that by the time they come to the next class, they're still feeling a part of the group. And um, so we ended up with, you know, lots of running jokes throughout the semester, um, end of semester winners sometimes if we've got that running leaderboard. So these are some of the ways it can be used and you can be really creative with it. You could use it to check comprehension of readings at the start of a class. Um, you can use it to begin class discussion, practice problems. So you can give, I think, up to four minutes to answer a question. So you can use it for more involved questions if you like as well, or revision at the end of the semester. So there's a lot of different ways it can be used. So that's all in the normal context of face-to-face -face teaching, but how um, can it be adapted online? So, um, so this is probably what we all want to know about. So Kahoot and uh, probably other polling platforms as well can be used in these ways. So firstly, synchronous polling in a face-to-face -face session. The second one, synchronous polling in an online session. So if I wanted to, I could share my screen with you now and we could do a Kahoot now. Um, all you'd need is the pin and a device. Or asynchronous polling in an online environment. So normally in a face-to-face -face context, I would use option one, um, synchronous polling in a face-to-face -face session. Occasionally I'd do asynchronous, but mostly it'd be option one. Um, when we moved to fully online teaching back in March, um, this is what I did in semester one. So in semester one, which runs from March to June, my lectures were asynchronous, so I used Kahoot asynchronously so that instead of um, doing it live in the lecture or in a Zoom class, um, the lecture would be on a video and then there would be a pin number at the end of that. So you can set a Kahoot as a challenge or for homework. Um, and um, so I used, that's how I mostly used it last semester in semester one. 
there was about a 15 to 30 percent uptake which is pretty comparable to normal lecture attendance obviously this was purely um, optional so that was um, pretty reasonable I think and for those students who did um, choose to do the cahoots they enjoyed it still had that friendly competition happening and um, and for those who did it they had really good feedback about it this current semester that we're in I'm using the mostly synchronous options. So in, we'll have like a computer lab and I'll, I'll do the Kahoot over Zoom live. Um, and again, students enjoy that friendly competition. And when I've missed a week or two, they're asking where's the Kahoots and asking for more. So um, it's been fairly good. So my overall reflection on using Kahoot in this kind of context um, I'd say, aside from the obvious benefits to learning, it's been, I guess it's, you know, there's probably no argument that this has been quite a difficult year for both staff and students. And it's been a really good way to retain some of that fun in learning and just have um, something that's a bit more lighthearted. And obviously, um, it can feel a little bit like talking into a sea of black screens on Zoom sometimes. So it's just one, one way of, helping with the engagement and creating that, um, that learning community uh, when it's potentially a bit more challenging in the online environment. A couple of other reflections, um, just briefly before I finish up. So um, because online learning has been a new experience for a lot of staff and students, I'd say my number one tip would be to check in with students via short polls or surveys just to, to see how they're finding things. Um, it's helped me reflect on what is and isn't working and make adjustments as I go. And of course, that's something that we could do anytime, even when we're not teaching online, but um, without the normal um, cues that you get in person, and it's just harder to gauge how things are going, how, how students are going. So I found that to be a really helpful way um, just to, to gauge things. Um, a couple of the themes that have arisen in these, um, in the check-ins that I've been doing so far this year. Um, the first, like the, the most obvious one initially was that students were finding it a bit hard to keep track of everything. Um, motivation has been a, a tricky one as well. Um, it's it has been a bit harder for some students to, to stay motivated. Um, that one's probably a little bit harder to address, but it's good to be aware. Um, and potentially, um, think readings are going to be a little bit more difficult to grasp than normal, but I think that probably depends on context. Um, and, and all of these things, all of these themes do depend on context and where things are at dependent on lockdown restrictions and and those types of things. So um, these were the themes that, that came up in my particular context, but I'd say the key would be just to um, to check in as, as you go. I found it helpful to check in as I go and, um, and adapt as needed. So I'll leave it there. Um, thank you very much. And perhaps we'll open it up for discussion or questions. Thank you very much, Amanda. I'll um, put the questions in. So, um, first question that came through on Padlet was from Matthew, um, which is, how much can you do on Kahoot for free? And do you need to get universities to, to pay uh, for what's going on? Yeah, great question. Um, the answer to that um, is, is not static. So, it's, it's changed over the last, I don't know, a couple of years since I've been using it. There is now a number of, there's a limit on the number of students. I think it's currently 100 students is the maximum now before you have to start paying. Um, but I still haven't actually paid anything to use Kahoot. So I'm still able to do everything I need to do so far for free. Um, so there's, it's, yeah, you can do a fair bit. You can do multiple choice quizzes. Um, and you can have up to 100 students in your class at, 
for a, for a start all for free. And the poll that you put up, the one about, you know, do you hate stats or love stats, was that a, a real poll? And is that daunting if students come back and say that they all um, hate stats? Or is it actually, can it be useful for the students to see they're not the only ones who are a bit nervous about the subject? Yeah, great question. Um, so that particular one, that was the first lecture of a particular semester with a cohort of students who were not from a statistics background. So it was really helpful to establish that from the beginning. And, um, and I wanted students to know that they could be honest in, in what they answered to that question. So it was helpful for them to know that I knew and that it was okay if they didn't like statistics. And it was helpful for me to be able to respond to that and say, look, I, I get it. I know that statistics isn't everybody's favorite subject. Um, and then kind of go from that common understanding. And the perception actually changed by the end of the semester. Um, so luckily they didn't hate stats um, that much by the end of semester. So I, I found it a really useful thing um, to know. Are you doing a good job if, you, if they're, they're not hating stats by the end of the semester, if they're not uh, mathematicians to start with? In fact, even most seem to. Um, we at least hated it a little bit. At least hated a little bit less. Yeah, that's all we can do, isn't it? Um, I think we've got time for one final question, which was, is just, have you got any tips on what makes a good polling question? Yeah, there's all sorts. Um, I guess it really depends on what you want to use it for and how you're using it. Um, the, the biggest way I've used it has just been at the end of a lecture. And so I've found that that helps students to, um, well, they've said that it helps them pay attention, especially if they want to do well in the Kahoot at the end. But I think it's also very reassuring for them if the questions aren't too tricky, um, but it's just kind of revising what we've done in the lecture. If they can have a few questions and do that and get them right, then that's, that builds up their confidence and they're getting that formative feedback straight away. So um, that, that would probably be... Um, a first step if you want to get started with it. That's great. I, uh, I will leave the questions at that and um, hand you back over to Claire then for now.